Sir, I take the liberty to address you as the author of the regulations lately made concerning the colonies and the taxes imposed upon them considered. It is not to the man, whoever you are, that I address myself, but it is to the author of a pamphlet which, according to the light I view it in, endeavors to fix shackles upon the American colonies, shackles which, however nicely polished, can by no means sit easy upon men who have just sentiments of their own rights and liberties. You have indeed brought this trouble upon yourself, for you say that many steps have been lately taken by the ministry to cement and perfect the necessary connection between the colonies and the mother kingdom, which every man who is sincerely interested in what is interesting to his country will anxiously consider the propriety of, will inquire into the information and canvass the principles upon which they have been adopted and will be ready to applaud what has been well done, condemn what has been done amiss, and suggest any emendations, improvements, or additions which may be within his knowledge and occur to his reflection. Encouraged, therefore, by so candid an invitation, I have undertaken to examine with an honest plainness and freedom whether the ministry by imposing taxes upon the colonies by authority of parliament have pursued a wise and salutary plan of government or whether they have exerted pernicious and destructive acts of power. I pretend not to concern myself with the regulations lately made to encourage population in the new acquisitions. Time can only determine whether the reasons upon which they have been founded are agreeable to the maxims of trade and sound policy or not. However, I will venture to observe that if the most powerful inducement towards peopling those acquisitions is to arise from the expectation of a constitution to be established in them similar to the other royal governments in America, it must be a strong circumstance, in my opinion, against their being settled by Englishmen, or even by foreigners, who do not live under the most despotic government, since, upon your principles of colony government, such a constitution will not be worth their acceptance. The question is whether the colonies are represented in the British Parliament or not. You affirm it to be an indubitable fact that they are represented and from thence you infer a right in the Parliament to impose taxes of every kind upon them. You do not insist upon the power, but upon the right of Parliament to impose taxes upon the colonies. This is certainly a very proper distinction, as right and power have very different meanings and conveyed very different ideas. For had you told us that the Parliament of Great Britain have power by the fleets and armies of the kingdom to impose taxes and to raise contributions upon the colonies, I should not have presumed to dispute the point with you. But as you insist upon the right only, I must beg leave to differ from you in opinion and shall give my reasons for it. 